Hey guys, so right here we have a kick guitar from Stumac and this is a Stratocaster and it is a mahogany body and a maple neck and we're going to go through the build. Um, this is going to be the first Strat that I've done, I've done a lot of tellies and so first thing I want to do is show you what we got, um, tell you my initial impressions of the kit um, before we really get into what we're going to use, what we're going to replace. Um, and just all the things we're going to do to it and our whole plan. So I cut it. This is really helpful actually. Uh, a lot of guitar kits, you buy them and it's like, figure it out. So if this is your first kit, this is a helpful thing. So nice that it comes with an actual legitimate set of strings anyway. Your seat. And let's get right into the fun stuff here. So here's the body. And here is the loaded pick guard. Everything looks to be soldered pretty well. Here is our mahogany body. So it looks like the way that they routed it is actually set up um, if you want to switch it out for humbuckers, you can do HSH. Um, actually, I'm pretty happy with the wood grain on this. It looks really nice. And you can see, um, if you look, here's a little tip. If you're trying to see how many pieces of wood it's made of, um, you can kind of, sometimes you can kind of see the difference in color here. Um, but you can also see on the edge here, it looks like they drew some like some pencil oh there's a little little filler there um but this is looks like a three-piece mahogany but it's actually matched up with the grains matched up really nicely so on the back you you don't really notice it either so that's great because we're going to do more of a natural finish on it very nice so there's our mahogany body and Here's our maple neck, and it is the paddle, so we'll have to cut that down. And so you can see across here. The, uh, the frets actually looked pretty well leveled. Um, they will need to be polished though. They're still a little bit rough. Nothing too bad. Uh, I will say Right away, this nut we're gonna we're gonna replace that. Before I dig into everything else, this is just your plastic nut. So, of all of the bits so far I've seen that look like they're at least um, pretty decent quality, this nut is not gonna do it. So we'll put something nicer in there. Um, otherwise, the neck looks pretty good. Looks like a decent piece of maple here, and it it is a uh, a separate fretboard that they've put on here that looks really nice though, truss rod. And let's see how it fits here. Wow, yeah. Just like in the Stumac video, that actually fits in really nice. So hopefully that should be very level, exactly where we need it. If you ever do guitar kit builds, one of the most annoying things is dealing with shims if you need to. But this looks pretty good. We'll, uh, we'll get into the finer points later on. That looks pretty solid. So it does come with all of your standard hardware, um, which is actually, um, I mean, I haven't looked at it, but I already decided I'm not gonna use it. Um, yep, just your standard tuner, standard plate, standard jack, Here's the bridge tremolo system. This actually looks pretty good. It actually has uh, 
This is nicer than some of the tele kits I've done. You actually get individual saddles there, um, strat style. So that's not too bad, but I actually ordered different ones. So I did get, this is kind of nice, they actually put, they ordered a vintage style of tuners and they actually put them in the box with the kit. So they know what they're doing over at Stumac. So here's vintage uh, style tuners. Those are gonna look sweet. So there's your basic kit unboxing. And the other thing that we're gonna do is I'll just give you a quick picture of what I plan to do with this guitar. Um, and then I'll show you the other hardware at a later time. But what we plan to do is clean this up a little bit. It is rough sanded. Um, the shape looks great. And actually the weight I'm really happy with. Um, and so we're going to take this um, outside into the uh, garage shop and sand this down with some 220 and really try and smooth it out, um, especially on the face. Um, little tip, one of the most, of all the guitar bodies um, that I've gotten, the most difficult spots um, that really come rough sanded is right in these pockets right here. Um, that's the part where you probably will spend the most time um, if you have some kind of belt sander um, or even some blocks like these guys um, this will go a long way to try and cleaning up inside those and uh, so we're gonna start with the 220 and see how that goes and once we get this um, sanded and cleaned up the way that we want um, I actually plan on using a die so we're gonna actually, you can't really tell because this box has been so dyed out, but um, this is a, just a black leather dye. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna apply that black, black leather dye, black leather dye, black leather dye, to the whole thing here, um, once we have it sanded smooth. And then we're gonna take, and we're gonna come back with like some 320 grit and just go back over it and put some extra wear um, like right here, uh, along the edges, anywhere that we think it would look like wear, because we want to make this guitar look lightly relict. I'm not going to take and beat it with metal things and bust it up, um, but I am going to kind of wear it back down um, with the sand with the sander and make it look um, really worn in some places. Um, and then I'm going to try something a little different. I haven't tried this before, but I got some stain. This is just some standard stain, and this happens to be more of a gunstock color because I really want to put um, a more vintage tint on this maple. Uh, if you can't tell, the maple looks really white, um, whiter than me in this um, lighting. And, uh, and I'm going to put that all over this once this is finished sanded. And then we're going to take and we're going to sand back a lot of that through the middle of the neck here. And uh, I'm going to try a new technique. Uh, I've done a couple of different ways, but I'm going to try to use some graphite. I've heard people talk about using pencil um, to make some wear on their actual fretboard. Uh, but I'm going to, I got a tube of graphite and I'm going to actually take some graphite on the neck and see if I can use that to make it look aged. Um, worst case scenario, I'll just kind of sand it back a bit. So um, that is the beginning of our experiment and the plan is then to uh, have this lightly relic looking guitar. Um, with a worn in neck um, and we'll talk more about how I'm going to finish that later and then this is going to be black and then sanded back so it's going to be um, looks a little bit it'll look a little bit like a black stain uh, but it'll also be kind of worn back to this color close to this color so we took the body outside and we sanded it down first with the 220 and then we hit it also with the 320 and we've gotten it pretty um, smooth here. It's not gonna be the finish level of what we want, but um, it is looking pretty nice. Um, I have noticed that some of those little bits um, that were glued, you can see the glue kind of filler pretty well. Um, but hopefully once we get into the dyeing, maybe we'll kind of lose that and see it black. So now I'm gonna show you how I do the dyeing. First things first, absolutely you want gloves on, unless you like your hands to look black for like a week. So first things first, you're going to need something uh, that's like a rag. Um, I just have kind of a cotton 
rag. Um, I recommend the nitro gloves because if you use latex, you get the powdery stuff. Um, for any finishing, I just don't, I don't like it. So I'm gonna get out my die. And then I also put down some plastic um, bubble wrap actually that came with the kit. So that comes conveniently. Um, so then I'm not dyeing other stuff under it. And you can tell I've used this black dye a bit. So I'm just gonna take this. Oh yeah. Thank you.